Hello, hello, Jamar Shah coming to you today from Frederick, Maryland. Today I'm with Roger Reed, or Robert Reed. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, y'all. And uh, Robert is a lieutenant colonel yep. with the Army. He's been in the Army for 16 years. Yep. So, episode number 34 of the Val Lives Interview Series, Why Do I Do What I Do? Number one, because there's successful people who deserve to have their stories told. Number two, there's people who need to hear successful stories, especially his story. And number three, to let you know you could go out there with a camera phone and a selfie stick and impact your community. So, just like always, no interviews over 10 minutes long, raw, uncut, no special lighting. Once again, I have a crazy dog outside, and um, he's behaving today, so it's yeah. pretty cool. So, Robert, why do you do what you do? Well, um came down through my family. Um, family always was in the military, so dad, he was a drill sergeant. He's on the Wall of Fame down in Sand Hill in Fort Benning, Georgia. He's like, son, you're going to go in as an officer, because he was drafted in the Korean War, and he says, you're going to go in as an officer. I was like, eh. I was waiting on a scholarship. Um, I was a bull rider growing up, waiting on a scholarship to come through. It wasn't coming, wasn't coming. Boom, I just said, you know what, I'm going to enlist. I went and enlisted. He lost his mind. So um, I got a scholarship while I was at basic training. They came to me and said, hey, we're going to send you to school. Army Pitt did a yeah, Green to Gold scholarship for me and then also got a scholarship um, in college for, Wait, for riding bulls. What does Green to Gold mean? Green to Gold, so there's different, uh, there's different uh, programs out there like OCS, Officer Candidate School, where a guy will come along within the military who is an enlisted soldier and we'll see a potential in him and they say, hey, let's send you to OCS. Well, OCS is after a guy that has a degree already and stuff like that. Well, I didn't. I was just coming out of basic training. They said, well, since you're going to go and get a degree, we're going to give you a green to gold scholarship. So that green um, is where you wear that green chevron and then boom, you become gold. That's when you get those butter bars, that, 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 that lieutenant bars on you. So that's what green to gold is all about. You get your four-year degree. They send you through a, a ROTC program there at the university. Once you graduate, you get commissioned as an officer. Okay. So tell us about your story because you have an interesting story. You said Jack Daniels saved Jack, your life? Jack Daniels saved my life. Okay. So people say that drinking will kill you, but it saved my life. Um, so after about my third tour coming home from Afghanistan, um, I was in a deep, dark place. Things just weren't going my way. I didn't think anything was I just constant nightmares were going on. Um, there was no help for us out there. I kept going for help, but counselors didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to deal with it. I was, I was living in a foxhole fighting position in my front yard. I dug it. I was drinking a jack of fifth, a fifth every night just to get myself to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. um, then one day I just, I said enough's enough. I came home from work, did my normal thing. Um, I was married at the time. She was out, out on business and I decided I'm going to go ahead and make this noose. I made the noose the night before. And then that night I was out doing my normal thing and drink, drinking my Jack and climbed up that tree. Well, I was so drunk off of Jack Daniels that I didn't know how, I didn't wrap that, that knot correctly around the tree. And it was a little itty bitty limb. So when I jumped, it came loose. It broke that, that, limb, that limb. And there I laid on the ground, woke up the next morning to a couple neighbors finding me. Um, and got that noose off of me, got me some help. So they always say that drinking will kill you. Well, Jack Daniels saved my life. I will never drink that thing again. I will kiss that bottle. I will hug that bottle, but I will never touch it again. Okay. And so <clears throat> what would you say to somebody coming out of the military who's had the ex some similar experiences that you have? What's the first thing they need to do to get some help? Well, the first thing is is to ask, to, to talk to somebody. To talk to, for me, it was finally talking to people that have dealt with it. The counselors that are out there, yeah, there are some that have served and, and been there, but nine times out of 10, there's not. So it's finding those people that have been there and done it and talking with those. I had many people knowing that, that I work with Platoon 22 come up to me at work and say, hey, I need somebody to talk to, counselors is not working for me. And it comes out, it comes out better when a person that's been there has dealt with it, um, they know how to overcome it. So mm -hmm. I just, I have a thing that I always tell people all the time, find that inner flame inside of you that makes you smile every single day. It's not that job, it's not that career that you're doing right now. Find that hobby that makes you smile every single day and try to do that every day. Cause that's what's good, it could be, it could be um, painting, it could be uh, woodwork, it could be electrical work, it could, it could be anything, getting on your motorcycle and riding, just mm -hmm. try the fishing, try to do anything do that every day it will help you 
Okay. What is it about Platoon 22 that is so important? Platoon 22 is that, that outreach. So when we first started as 22 Needs to Face, um, when we started coming out, people were hitting up constantly. Well, hitting us up constantly. Well, um, Danny Farrar and myself were the only ones that could really talk to somebody. So we were just getting overwhelmed. So we knew that this was going to go somewhere fast because of one, Project 22, the other organization that's out there, that those two guys that rode across country that we brought the film here and watched. Um, and then 22 Kill, where we wear these these black rings, these sign of salute to our to our fallen comrades. So it's just it's just very very important for the outreach, and that's where Rally in the Valley is coming around for on July 30th, because that is an outreach for all of our veterans to come there. Boom! That is one big place where people can come together, start chatting together, where people have their problems, and that's where. For me, the Desert Knights of America saved my life because all those brothers have been there and done it. And though that's my therapy. I, I hardly ever go see a counselor anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it, I've been through probably eight different counselors, but that motorcycle club is everything to me. They've, they have, they, you can talk to them about anything and those guys will give you feedback and it makes you feel, feel it gets you out of that dark place. Okay, cool. So a couple of different questions. Um, what has been the proudest moment of your career? Making lieutenant colonel at 16 years. My father always said he was a driver for a lieutenant colonel in the Korean War. And he goes, I want you to be a lieutenant colonel. And he was hoping to be alive um, to see that promotion. Um, he was not. He passed away right before that. But I had in his honor, I had my promotion ceremony at the Korean War Memorial down in Washington, D.C. And I laid a, uh, a yellow wreath for him there. So that was one of the proudest moments that I finally made lieutenant colonel because that's what my dad always wanted me to do, you know, and to be a, a officer that tried to commit suicide at the at the uh, at the rank of captain, and kept it wasn't a stigmatism, it wasn't there. I came forward finally. I had to come forward with trying to commit suicide to get help and to wake people's eyes up. Well, that stigmatism wasn't there. I kept my security clearance, and I still made rank. Mm -hmm. So that stigmatism is is not true. You can still make rank. You can your career will not stop. So making. Making this rank that I'm currently at is is a huge point in my life right now. So are you saying that some people, they try to commit suicide, but they don't tell anybody because they're afraid it may impact their career well, in a negative way? No. I, what I'm trying to say is that people that have the PTS, we don't put the D on the end of it because it's not a disability, it's not mm -hmm. a disorder. So the PTS, people are afraid to come forward and put that on their medical records because they're thinking, oh, it's going to take away my security clearance. Gotcha. Well, and I'm not going to start getting, I'm not going to get rank anymore. I'm just going to be stuck where I'm at. That's not, that's not the case. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, um, do you have a morning routine, something you do every morning to get your day started successfully? Well, I get up at, uh, about 4.15 every morning okay. to get on this on 270 before 5.30 because if you okay. don't, you're stuck. Right. So, <laughs> and I have to go to work all the way in Washington, DC. So, um, my morning routine is get up, shave, um, get ready for the day, come down and get my, my cup of coffee because um, like I've told you before, I have to have my at least three cups of coffee before I get my day even going. Three. I used to do eight a day. Now I'm down to three, so I'm doing better. All right. Do you have any major life goals? Skydiving, uh, Mount Everest, you know, scuba diving, swim with the sharks, anything? I, my, my life goal is to, to retire in my 30 years of service. I'm going to go 30 years, and I want to be a full-time RVer. Full-time RVer? Yep. Okay, so where do you want to travel in your RV? I did it as a kid with my parents. They they had an RV and they we owned our own business. Um, my parents owned a bowling alley, so they closed it down every day, every year for 30 days, and we went out and just saw saw the country. I think I've been in every 54 states and territories besides besides getting the camper over over there overseas and stuff like that in those state those territories, but around here um, in the lower 40s, 48. So um, we uh, I've been everywhere pretty much in my in my career and in my life. So I want to just see it again. I'm tired of flying everywhere. You can't see this beautiful country from the air. You got to see it on the ground. Okay. And there are so many places out here to see on the ground. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So that's that's what I want to do. All right. So Val Lives Interview Series, episode number 34. A little bit different today, a little bit more in depth. So Robert, how can people get a hold of you? Um, people want to reach out to me. You can always hit me up on Facebook. You can find me at Robert Robert Reed. Um, my my profile picture has my my cut on. You can't you can't miss me. Um, friends with Danny Farrar. So just, if you got you got to look through that, find me that way. Or seven zero three seven seven four seven one seven three. Hit me up anytime if anybody needs to talk about any problems that they're having.
All right. So the ultimate success story of somebody who did not let his past um, affect his future. So I'm proud of you, brother. I yeah. appreciate all that you do. So Val is interview series number 34. We went over 10 minutes today, but that's because I talk so much, right? Uh, go out there, show some valor. Show some valor. Let's see if we can do it. You got to hide, hide the thumb. Hide the thumb. <laughs> hide the thumb. There, there it is. <laughs> no weapon formed against shall prosper. Talk to you next week. Bye. Bye, y'all.